Well, good evening. Welcome to Sanctuary Lakeside Church's Wednesday evening devotions. We're glad you're with us. And uh, we are going to continue uh, moving toward our new format. We are almost there. Um, it isn't big changes, small changes, but um, hopefully uh, they will make it easier for you to join these devotions. We're shortening them up a little bit so that uh, they don't take a lot of time, um, but that you'll still have the full impact of uh, their their music, their scripture, their prayer, and uh, a worthwhile, a meaningful message. So thank you for joining us. We're going to move into our first song, and then we'll be back with our prayer. Father, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Not for ever in green pastures do we ask our way to be, but by steep and rugged pathways would we strive to climb to Thee. Not forever by still waters would we idly quiet stay, but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Be our strength in hours of weakness, in our wanderings be our guide, through endeavor, failure, danger, Father, be Thou at our side. Let our path be bright or dreary, storm or sunshine be our share. May our souls in hope unweary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. Well, it's that time of our service when we take our joys and concerns to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to run through these uh, uh, fairly quickly this evening. We uh, have been praying for Buzz here in Ohio, who is uh, has ha well was scheduled for surgery for colon cancer. Um, I'm pleased to report that Buzz. Uh, has um, had his surgery. They were. They believe they have removed all the tumors. There, all of the tumor, um, and uh, they are. Uh, they said that none of the lymph nodes in the area were inf affected, and so they're very optimistic about a recovery. So prayers answered. God is great, and we're grateful for that. Now we pray for complete and rapid healing for Buzz. Nadia in New York continues to uh, recover. Uh, progress again is slow, but she is walking with the assistance of a cane. 
and uh, slowly but surely, and she's about to start some other treatments. Uh, and uh, uh, if I understood that correctly, and that to help the nerves and the and uh, uh, different parts that aren't working to to work better. And so we're going to pray for uh, continued healing for her and complete recovery so that she can go back to doing what she loves to do, and that's take care of her family. Um, we had a terrible storm sweep through uh, our area of Ohio. They actually were just north of us a, a few miles, and uh, um, there were, was a tremendous damage by the storm um, and three fatalities. Uh, there are three families that we need to pray for this evening that uh, lost their, of, of people who lost their lives uh, in that storm. And we pray for those who lost homes and um, campers that went through a camper park and destroyed a bunch of, of campers and uh, uh, turned them over and and uh, broke them apart, and uh, and that storm came up from Texas, so there were other places in the way of that storm. So we just pray for all the people that have been affected by that storm this week. It was Girl Scout week, uh, and uh, a week ago we uh, we celebrated that at our brick and mortar church at Spencerville. United Methodists, and so we're thankful for the Girl Scouts and all the good that they do and for the wonderful opportunity they have to learn uh, to be good citizens of this great country. Um, it is primary time, so we pray for our elections, that the people that are most likely to take the country in a God-like direction will be elected. Um, and so... Uh, those are our prayers for the evening. We'll give you some time to raise yours from your heart uh, as we move through the prayer. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening. The day is nearly over. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light do we see light. O gracious light, pure brightness with our everlasting God in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, most holy and blessed Trinity. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Triune God, giver of grace, Christ of compassion, saving spirit, we open ourselves to you, frail creatures. We fail, we sin, we eat forbidden fruit, we suffer wrongs that others have done to us, Holy God, transform us from glory to glory into the image of Christ, that we may do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with you, and forgive as you have forgiven us. We now lift those prayers that we hold in our hearts. Through your Spirit, who is able to make all things new, we end our prayer with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our scripture this evening 
<clears throat> excuse me, comes from the Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, verses 34 to 50. The crowd responded, We understood from the Scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can you say the Son of Man will die? Just who is this Son of Man anyway? Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message, to whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? But the people couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Isaiah was referring to Jesus when he said this because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah's glory. Many people did believe him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God, who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in the dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world, not judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know his commands lead to eternal life, so I say whatever the Father tells me to say. These are the very words of God for the people of God, and your response is, thanks be to God. In the scripture that we just heard, um, John quotes from Isaiah as he says, the Lord has blinded their eyes. We're going to talk a little bit about that statement because it seems funny that the Lord would blind the eyes of the ones that he wanted to see his son, but um, there's more to it than that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit this evening. The crowd couldn't believe what Jesus was saying about the Messiah. They were waving palm branches for a victorious Messiah who they thought would set up a political earthly kingdom that would never end. From their reading of certain scriptures, and you can see those in Psalm 89, verses 35 and 36, and Isaiah 9, verse 7, they thought the Messiah would never die. Other passages, however, showed that he would die, such as Isaiah 53, verses 5 to 9. Jesus' words did not mesh with their concept of the Messiah. First, he had to suffer and die. Then, 
he would one day set up an eternal kingdom. What kind of Messiah or Savior are we seeking today? We must beware of trying to force Jesus into our own mold. He won't fit. Jesus said he would be with them in person only for a short time, and they should take advantage of his presence while they had it. Like a light shining in a dark place, he would point out the way they should walk. If they walked in his light, they would become children of light, revealing the truth and pointing people toward God. As Christians, we are to be Christ's light bearers, letting the light shine through us to others. How brightly are our lights shining? Can others see Christ in us and in our actions? Jesus had performed many miracles, but people still didn't believe in him. Likewise, many today won't believe despite all God does. Don't be discouraged if your witness to Christ doesn't turn as many to him as you would like it to. Your job is to continue as a faithful witness for the good news. You are responsible to reach out to others, but they are responsible for their own decisions on how they respond to that, and ultimately, they're responsible for their own destiny. Eternal life or death, it's their choice. People in Jesus' time, like those in the time of Isaiah, would not believe despite all the evidence. As a result, God hardened their hearts. You see, it wasn't before that. It was after they'd rejected that, uh, rejected Jesus that wouldn't believe that. And so God hardened their hearts. Does that mean God intentionally prevented these people from believing in him? No. He simply confirmed their own choices. As my dad used to say as I was about to make a really bad decision, well, if that's your choice. And then he would also say, choices have consequences. After a lifetime of resisting God, the people had become so set in their ways that they wouldn't even try to understand Jesus' message. For such people, it is virtually impossible to come to God. Their hearts have been permanently hardened. They can't even get out of their own way. Along with those who refuse to believe, many believe but refuse to admit it. This is just as bad, and Jesus had strong words for those people. People who will not take a stand for Jesus are afraid of rejection and possible ridicule. Many Jewish leaders wouldn't admit to faith in Jesus because they feared that they would be kicked out of the synagogue and lose their high standing in the community. But the praise of others is fickle and short-lived. We should be more concerned about God's eternal acceptance than about the temporary approval of others. We often wonder what God is like. How can we know the Creator when He doesn't make Himself visible? Well, Jesus made that pretty simple. He said plainly that, those who see him see God, because he is God. Phrases like that are why we believe in the, the triune God, the three-in-one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you, know, if you want to know God, what God is like, all we have to do is study the person and the words of Jesus Christ. The purpose of Jesus' first mission on earth was not to judge people, but to show them the way to salvation and eternal life, and to give them a chance to follow him. When he comes again, one of his main purposes will be to judge 
people on how they lived on earth. Christ's words that we would not accept and obey will ultimately condemn us if we don't turn away from them, from our turning away from Jesus. On that day of judgment, those who have accepted Jesus and lived his way will be raised to eternal life. And those who have rejected Jesus in any way, they will face eternal punishment. We need to decide how, right now, which side we want to be on because the consequences of our decision will ultimately be eternal. You see, the day of judgment, Jesus comes back, and at that time, we're out of time. We need to decide now how, whether we want to follow the light of Jesus or whether we want to stay in darkness, because if we don't follow Jesus, then it will be darkness. And there are people out there that say, well, uh, that was just something that was made up so that people, you know, if you don't follow Jesus, you're going to go to hell. And, and that was just something the church made up. Well, that's a misconception because God doesn't send people to hell. I've preached this many times. People make the decision on where they want to go. But there's a very definite decision to be made. Today, you're at a fork in the road. Are you going to take the narrow path of salvation and follow Jesus? Or are you going to take the wide path of destruction and follow the world and live in the world I'm going to pray for you that you'll make that right decision. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your son who has given us a choice. He's given us the choice because he loves us. We pray today that we will make the right choice and move closer to you and further away from that path to destruction. Give us strength and courage to face trials and tribulations and even ridicule for our decision. Help us be, to be steadfast in our faith and to let our light shine among others, that they too may reach this wonderful eternal decision to follow Jesus and to live forever. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to move into our final song, and then we'll be back for our benediction. Stay tuned. grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first
Well, we hope you've uh, found this evening's devotion meaningful. We're so glad you joined us. You make what we do possible. If you can believe it or not, we're closing in on three years of uh, Sanctuary Lakeside Church and our ministry. We've given out hundreds of crosses as we've traveled around the country and prayed for many, many people. And uh, we've brought this Wednesday evening devotion to you every Wednesday evening with, I think, maybe one or two exceptions when we absolutely couldn't get to some place to broadcast it um, over those three years. And we're, we're proud to be serving our Savior and hope that you will stay with us as we continue this ministry. And now please receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Remember, we love you, and God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next week, good night, and God bless.